This is Mr. Mason Ed, and what we're going to do today is just practice doing a few problems involving surface area. So let's take a look at this first example, which reads, Faith wants to wrap a jewelry box. How many square inches of paper is needed to completely cover the box? Now, it doesn't say anywhere in the problem to find the surface area, but we should be able to infer by the keyword cover that we are talking about surface area. For example, your skin covers the surface of your body, so we would say that anything that covers something is on the surface, or a blanket is on the surface of the bed and it covers your bed. Therefore, to figure out how many square inches of paper is needed to cover the outside of the box, what we have to do is understand that the box is actually the net of a cube. So they took its three-dimensional form and unfolded it into its two-dimensional form. Now let's take a look at this individual square right here. We can see that its width is 3.5, which means its length is also 3.5. So to find the area of this individual surface right here, all we have to do is take that individual side and raise it to the second power or multiply it by itself. So let's go ahead and multiply 3.5 by itself and see what that product gives us. All right, so we have five times five is 25, and we have five times three is 15, plus two more is 17. And we put a zero here and proceed to multiply with this three. Three times five is 15, we carry the one, and three times three is nine plus one more is 10. All right, let's add these digits together, and we have a five in this column, 12 in this column, two in this column, and a one in this column. Now in the problem, we have two decimal points. We have one place value after this decimal and another place value after that decimal for a total of two place values, which means in our answer, we must go to the end and move to the left two place values. So the area of this individual square is 12.25 square inches. Now we're not complete with this problem yet. What we have to do now is take 12.25 and we have to multiply that by six because a cube has six faces or surfaces that are identical to each other. So six times five is 30, and six times two is 12, plus five is 15, and six times two is 12, plus one more is 13, and six times one is six, plus one is seven. And in this problem, we have two numbers after the decimal point. So we go to the end here and move to the left two spaces. So we would say that the surface area of this cube is 73 and 5 tenths square inches. Now remember, after any decimal point, if you have any zeros at the end, you can simply get rid of those zeros. All right, let's go ahead and solve another example involving surface area. So what we have here is the two-dimensional form of a triangular prism. And what we have to do is find its total surface area. Now, one thing that we should know before getting started is that the two triangular surfaces of any triangular prism are congruent to each other, meaning that they will have the same area. So let's find the area of this triangle first. First, we need to identify the base and the height of this triangle. And remember, the base and height of any triangle will always form perpendicular lines. So from this point to this point is the base of this triangle. And from the top of this triangle, straight down to the base is the height of the triangle. Now there is no number listed right here for the base length, but remember this triangle is congruent to this triangle, so all we have to do is notice that this line right here is a length of six, which means this distance here is also a length of six. All right, now that we know that the base of this triangle is six and its height is four, we can go ahead and multiply that base by that height, and we must not forget to divide by two to find the area of that individual triangle. So for that triangle, we have 24 divided by two, which is equal to 
12 square units. So we would say the area of this triangle is 12, which means the area of this one below is 12. So altogether, that gives us a surface area of 24 between the two triangles. Okay, let's figure out what the area is of the three rectangles. Now, notice that this rectangle here has a height of 9, as does this rectangle and this rectangle. So the height of each one of these rectangles are going to be the same. We really just got to be careful when we figure out what the width of each one of these is. Let's start with this rectangle right here. Now notice there is no number written by this dimension right here, but one thing we should note is that if you were to fold this object into its three-dimensional shape, this edge right here, which is five feet, would line up perfectly with this edge right here, which means that this distance is also five feet. Now, this side of the triangle is identical to this side of the triangle, which means this edge is five feet. And that means that this edge will line up perfectly with this edge. So now we know that this length is also 5 feet. So now we know that the dimensions of this rectangle are 5 and 9, which produces 45. We know that the dimensions of this middle rectangle here are 6 and 9, which produces 54 square units. And the dimensions of this rectangle are the same as this one. So we multiply 5 times 9, which is 45. So now we can go ahead and add the area of the two triangles, which is 24, to 45, 54, and 45. And that is going to be the total surface area of our triangular prism. All right, this column of numbers here is a total of 18. We carry the 1. And this column of numbers here is a total of 16. So the surface area of this triangular prism is 168 square feet. All right, let's go ahead and do just one more example involving surface area. All right, in this problem here, we have a square pyramid. And what we should note about any square pyramid is that the four triangular surfaces are congruent to each other. So if we could just find the area of one of these triangles, we could just multiply that by four to find the total area of the four triangular surfaces. And don't forget, we have a square here in the middle. And this square is an eight by eight square, and that's just gonna be 64. So like right away, I'm just gonna write 64 for the area of this square. Now, because this middle shape is a square, that means that all four sides of that square are identical to each other, which means the distance from here to here is eight. And we needed to know that because to find the area of a triangular surface, we need to multiply its base by its height and then divide by two. So let's go ahead and multiply eight by six and divide by two. All right, eight times six is 48. And if we divide that by two, we get an area of 24 square units. Now remember, we have four identical surfaces that are 24 square units. So we're gonna go ahead and multiply 24 by four, which is a product of 96 square units. Now we're gonna take the area of the four triangular surfaces and add that to the area of the square surface, which is 64. And that gives us a total of 160 square feet. And notice with this example, we did not involve any formula. We just based everything off of our knowledge of squares and triangles. All right, so that was just three examples involving surface area. I hope this video was helpful, and please don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you can be informed of new tutorials as they become available.